our first uh, subtopic in this uh, screencast is um, uh, what is uh, CGI. So CGI stands for uh, Common Gateway Interface. And it is a set of protocols for generating dynamic web content. Dynamic content differs from static content in that it is automatically generated by applications without any manual human intervention. And the meaning of uh, the term common in uh, the CGI acronym means that uh, it is not specific to any operating system or programming language. You can write your CGI applications on Linux, uh, Unix, Windows, uh, Mac OS, uh, and uh, you can write them in uh, all mainstream programming languages, especially in Pro and Python, uh, the two languages of choice for CGI applications. So CGI um, is said to have been jointly developed by the National Center for Supercomputing Applications. So let's um, write it down, National Center for Super Computing Applications, uh, NCSA, uh, at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. And uh, the second uh, developer was the CERN. Um, that's the uh, European Organization for uh, Nuclear research uh, in the early 1990s. And the primary objective of uh, CGI was dynamic content generation. It was uh, quickly adopted as an unofficial web communication standard worldwide because of its simplicity, brevity, and uh, informal specification. So let's talk about uh, client-server uh, interaction so the second uh, subtopic in this screencast. So what's a typical logical sequence uh, of steps to generate dynamic content? Uh, for example, a web page or, uh, um, or an XML summary uh, of some event um, is as follows. So let me start. Uh, let's imagine uh, that uh, this is our uh, client. Right? Let's call it C. And uh, uh, this is our server. Uh, let's call it S. Right? So client-server uh, interaction. Um, an input is taken from the client. So the client sends what is known as request. Right? Let's write it as a rec request to the server. Uh, the server uh, processes this input, uh, generates uh, dynamic content, and then sends that content back to the client. So let's call this dynamic content uh, DC. And so this simple interaction can be uh, made, uh, will make this simple interaction more concrete um, um, by saying that a web server executes a CGI program in response to the client request. The client request actually specifies that uh, explicitly. I want you to execute a specific CGI uh, script. Uh, and um, um, the server runs it, uh, executes the uh, CGI script. The CGI scripts are executed on the server, not, not on the client, unlike uh, other web development technologies, for example, Java servlets that can execute on the client. And um, uh, then uh, the CGI script generates dynamic content and returns that to the client. Um, and uh, the client displays it in the, in the browser. Now, there are uh, two types of um, methods, right? Um, or request uh, methods um, that um, clients and servers use. And they are uh, get and uh, post. 
then uh, when the get method is used uh, the input is sent to the server as part of the URL and that input can be empty in which case CGI script specified by the URL runs without any input and when the input is not empty it is appended at the end of the URL after the uh, question mark delimiter and the input proper is a sequence of name value pairs separated by the ampersand and each name value pair has the form name equals value so let's uh, let's make this uh, more concrete let's assume that we have written a CGI program script and vars.pl and we will write this script later on and this script will display all CGI global variables that the client and server use to communicate uh, with and discover information about each other. So suppose that we know that the URL for our script is at uh, let's expand this area so the URL at our script is at uh, HTTP uh, localhost 8000 CGI bin and vars.pl right so let's say when the client wants to execute and vars.pl uh, this is the URL uh, that the client has to send to the server in order for the server to run this CGI script so if we uh, just open a browser right and enter this URL as is without anything then um, the server will run and underscore vars pl without any input but we can specify uh, an input so for example we can let's say run it as HTTP localhost uh, 8000 CGI bin env underscore vars dot pl and then this is the question mark delimiter that we uh, briefly mentioned a couple of uh, uh, minutes ago and uh, let's say we can say uh, x equals 1 and y equals 2 so this is the question mark is the so-called uh, input delimiter it signals then whatever follows is the input and then the input itself consists of uh, the name value pairs right so the input to uh, this script and se separated by the ampersand so the input to this uh, script in this case is uh, uh, x equals 1 and y equals 2 and it consists of two name value pairs the first pair being x equals well, let's put it in strings x equals 1 and the second uh, name value pair is y equals 2 right so uh, x is a name uh, 1 is the value in the first name value pair y is the name in the second value pair and 2 is the value in the second value pair and the value of the input right uh, since this is the get method so whenever we use something like this that means that um, let's put this here uh, this is get method is used uh, whenever we use something like this that means that we're executing uh, the get method and uh, um, uh, if we do that uh, if we uh, say to the server that we are using the get method the value of the input is stored in the CGI environment variable query string so when we submit this URL to the server uh, the input of the query string will be set to x equals 1 and y equals 2 that's uh, that's that's our that's our input Okay, so in the next screencast, we'll continue with the CGI development process and we'll make most of these points more concrete through the uh, actual Perl and Python code samples.